Clark, and I'm going to be reading a story to you today, I'm a Saint in the Making, by Lisa M. Hensley. God has a mission for me. I'm a saint in the making. What does that mean? It means that although I'm small, God has an important mission for me. God loves me so much that long before I was born, he sent his son Jesus to save me and to teach me to love and serve our world. Guess what? God loves you that much too. That's why you are also a saint in the making. But how can this be? I mean, how could I, an ordinary person, ever be a saint? Here's what I know. Saints in the making are ordinary people like you and me, and even ordinary people are called to live extraordinary lives. Saints have been kings and queens, priests and religious sisters, moms and dads, teachers and doctors, and business owners and workers. Some people were even children when they became saints. They've all had one thing in common. They're heroes. Not the kind of heroes who wear capes or have superpowers like flying or x-ray vision. The saints' powers are courage, peacemaking, hope, faith, and love. I can be a hero too. Every saint is unique. Do you know what that means? Each one was different from the others. Each had his or her own way of being a saint, but they all shared two important missions. Every saint in the past and every saint in the making is a role model and a prayer champion. Role models set a good example. They teach and help others with words, with actions, and with love. You don't have to be older than someone else to set a good example. You don't even have to be smarter or faster or stronger. I try to set a good example for my brothers and sisters and the other kids at my school. I try to love them as a role model would. I can even teach my parents and my teacher how to love as Jesus did. Prayer champions love God so much that they speak to God every day in prayer. You've seen how people become champions in books, games, and movies. Champions don't have to be big, loud, or first in line in order to be champions. They support and defend others with practice, loyalty, and faithfulness. A champion in prayer does that too. Because we are saints in the making, we try to be prayer champions with practice, loyalty, and faithfulness. We can pray quietly in our hearts or with our out loud words and songs. We can pray alone or invite others to pray with us. Let's meet some saints who came before us. I've learned about some saints from long ago. They aren't very different from me, but some of them were able to walk and work and eat with Jesus when he was living on earth. That must have been amazing. Jesus' mother and father, Mary and Joseph, held, fed, sheltered, and cared for Jesus. Mary and Joseph were Jesus' parents, but they were also his very first followers. They were saints. It's Mary who taught us that to be saints in the making, we should always say yes to Jesus. Jesus also had a group of followers called his disciples. After Jesus went to heaven, they became leaders in the early church, and they taught everyone they met to know and love Jesus. They were saints. Peter, John, Paul, Mary Magdalene, Priscilla and Aquila, and many others who we read about in the Bible found different ways to share what they had learned from Jesus. Sometimes they were afraid to be Christians, but they found the courage they needed to choose the right path. 
Soon, more and more people wanted to know about the lessons that Jesus taught. The church grew and grew, calling all of us to be saints in the making. Some saints are so famous that the whole world celebrates them. But sometimes we might forget the real reason that we're celebrating. I've heard about St. Nicholas. He was always generous and protective of those in need. Because he gave secret gifts to the poor, we celebrate his memory as a kind and loving saint who shared what he had with others. Then there's St. Patrick. He loved God so much that he devoted his whole life to sharing God's love with the people of Ireland. Each year on St. Patrick's Day, we wear green to remember the creative ways he shared his faith. We use the image of the shamrock as St. Patrick did to remember the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Every saint has what we call a feast day, a day on which we remember the life of that saint. Saints in the making live in many different places. Some live in cities, some on farms, some in deserts, some in suburbs, and some near water. St. Juan Diego was a poor farmer in Mexico who learned to love Jesus and Mary very much. St. Therese of Lisieux wanted to travel the world sharing the gospel, but instead lived a quiet life in France as a sister. She found simple little ways to show her love for Jesus and the people around her every day. St. Mary MacKillop traveled all over her country of Australia to make sure that poor children had the opportunity to go to school. Augustus Tolton was born a slave, but gained his freedom, was ordained a priest in Rome, and came home to minister to his community in the United States. Father Tolton is on his path to being canonized. That's the official way the church recognizes the life of a saint. Saints come from every corner of the world. Some saints lived many years ago, and we learn about them in the Bible or in books. Many other saints have lived recently. We can see pictures of them or watch videos of them as they were learning to be saints in the making. Mother Teresa was known around the world for her kindness and love for the poorest of the poor. She was one of the most famous people in the world. She recognized the face of Jesus even in, pe even in people that no one else cared about. Now she is Saint Teresa of Calcutta. A young boy named Carol grew up to be a saint named John Paul II. When Carol was young, he loved playing soccer and acting in plays. When he grew up, he wanted to give his life fully to God. Carol became a priest, a bishop, and then a pope named John Paul II. As pope, he led many hearts to Jesus. He did this by writing books teaching people about God's love, and traveling to every corner of the world to share that love. One day, a man tried to hurt Pope John Paul II. The Pope wanted this man to know the power of God's love so much that he visited him in prison, forgave him, and asked everyone to pray for him. That man came to know and love Jesus too. You don't have to be a grown-up to be a saint. I'm not a grown-up yet. Saint Dominic Savio loved Jesus and Mary so much that he wanted them to be his best friends. He decided to do all of his daily chores with love, turning them into his prayers. I can't do big things, said Dominic, but I want everything to be for the glory of God. Little saints Francisco and Jacinta and their cousin Lucia 
were poor shepherds who didn't even know how to read. But God chose to send them a very special message through Jesus' mother, Mary, so that the whole world could know and follow Jesus. Blessed Chiara Vadano loved sports and her family, but she loved Jesus even more. When she became very sick, she helped everyone around her discover that God's beautiful love is always with us, even when life is challenging. Some saints traveled far from their homes to other parts of the world to share their love for Jesus. We call them missionaries. St. Catherine Drexel grew up in a wealthy home but had a heart full of love for the poor. After she became a religious sister, she traveled as a missionary to Native American reservations in the United States. St. Catherine established schools and dedicated her missionary life to sharing God's love with others. Other saints found ways to be missionaries in the neighborhoods where they already lived. They showed God's love to people in many simple ways. St. Francis heard God calling him to give away all his riches and help people in his hometown of Assisi to live more peacefully, generously, and lovingly. We saints in the making can do this too by opening our hearts and minds to hear what God is asking of us. So what should we do? It's our turn to be saints in the making. In small ways, every day, we have the chance to share God's love with everyone we meet. We listen with our ears to hear the cries of someone who is sad. We look with our eyes to notice a friend who's being treated unkindly. We speak with our mouths to share words that are just and true. We touch with our hands to hug a friend who is hurt or feed someone who is hungry. Being a saint in the making means taking time every day to grow in holiness. I love to read the stories of saints who came before me and to learn from their examples. I love to share my love for Jesus with my friends and family. Do you always like to go to church? Sometimes we might think it's only a boring place for grown-ups, but I know that really our church is a home for saints in the making. I try to remember that it's not just a place where we go on Sundays, but a special place to visit with Jesus all week long. I love to go inside our church for a few minutes just to say hi to Jesus. God reminds me that prayer is a saint's special way of talking with him, and I can talk with God in prayer any time of day and in any place. Being a saint in the making also means that I need to keep my body strong and pure. When I eat healthy meals, sleep well, and exercise, I train my body to be strong so that I'll be ready for any mission God gives me. Caring for the body God gave me means treating my body with respect and love. God gave me a body to help others. Being a saint in the making means noticing when someone around me needs help and acting with generosity. I help people who need food or shelter by doing extra chores for my parents or neighbors. I donate the money I earn to charities in my community that provide clothing, groceries, and help to families who need assistance. Our family makes better choices to buy fewer things so that we will have extra resources to help families in other parts of the world have clean water, good education, and safe homes. God asks me to share the gifts I have with our world. Being a saint in the making means caring for God's beautiful creation. I love to feed my pets and take them for walks in our neighborhood 
Our family recycles and we try to conserve water. We grow vegetables and fruit in our garden and care for the trees in our community. God made me a caretaker of our world. Being a saint in the making means looking for special ways to share extra love with those who are hurting or tired or lonely. Sometimes loving is easy, but sometimes it takes extra patience and understanding. I look for the friend in my class who's been bullied and ask him to play with me. I visit my grandma at her nursing home and draw pictures for her to decorate her walls. I hug my dad when he comes home from a long day at work and thank him for taking such good care of our family. I give an extra smile to the woman I see on the street corner or at the market. God made my heart big enough to love anyone. Being a saint in the making means looking for ways to share God's story with everyone I meet. I learn God's story at church, in the Bible, and by listening to my parents and teachers. I share my love for God with my words, with songs, or even with dancing and games. God gave me a huge imagination and special talents to be his storyteller. Even though I'm a saint in the making, sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I'm mean, impatient, or unkind. Sometimes I don't listen to my parents, or I make a bad choice. If I do something wrong or hurt someone's feelings, I try to make things better and say I'm sorry to God and to the person I've hurt. God loves me so much that even when I mess up, he always forgives and loves me. I try to remember every day when I wake up that I'm on a special mission, a mission to be a saint in the making. Would you like to be part of this mission too? Don't be afraid. Jesus taught us the way and God has given us every gift we need to live life for him and for others. I'm a saint in the making and you are too. Our world is waiting for us. Let's go.